Morgan of SunWest Mortgage is here to change the world of loan originations forever. From sending updates to your clients to allowing you more time, you can do it all in a simple chat. You no longer have to struggle with documents. All you need to do is select the files and upload them and they're submitted in an instant along with your loan file. With SunWest, your true home is always within. Welcome to The Interest, I'm Christine Stewart. The mortgage industry seems to be headed for a correction, but it's gonna be slow. The NBA announced today that mortgage applications are continuing their decline even as rates creep downward. Mortgage applications decreased 2% compared to the previous week, at the same time as the 30-year fixed rate mortgage declined eight basis points to 6.41%. The NBA says the 30-year fixed rate was 73 basis points lower than a month ago, but still more than three percentage points higher than in December 2021. Additionally, the pace of refinancing remained around 80% lower than a year ago. Purchase activity slowed last week with a drop in conventional purchase applications. The average loan size decreased to just over 387,000, its lowest level since January 2021. In other news, Realtor.com has released its forecast for the top 10 housing markets in 2023. These markets are poised to see the strongest combined growth in home sales and listing prices in the coming year. But up to this point, they have seen lower price increases, a relatively smaller affordability crunch than other markets across the U.S. This year's top 10 in rank order are Hartford, West Hartford, Connecticut, El Paso, Texas, Louisville, Kentucky, Worcester, Massachusetts, Buffalo, Chittawaga, New York, Augusta, Richmond County, Georgia, Grand Rapids, Wyoming, Michigan, Columbia, South Carolina, Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Toledo, Ohio. Home sales across the top 10 markets are forecast to grow by 5.2% year over year in 2023, whereas the national home sale projection is for declining sales. Additionally, average home prices in the top 10 are expected to increase 7.3%. At a time when housing costs are a concern for many, these areas offer relative affordability, having experienced less of a price surge than other extremely hot pandemic-era markets. They also have a greater share of homeowners who own their homes outright without a mortgage, giving more residents equity to build upon. Coming up, a new study finds there's a lot of reasons why the racial home ownership gap isn't closing. Don't miss the largest regional mortgage show in the nation. The New England Mortgage Expo returns to Mohegan Sun in Connecticut, January 12th and 13th. See us at www.nemortgageexpo.com. Start your year with the best connections in the industry. Dozens of sessions, scores of exhibitors. It's where success is written every hour. www.nemortgageexpo.com. Welcome back. As we reported last week, the National Association of Real Estate Brokers found that the racial home ownership gap essentially stayed the same through the pandemic. Why aren't we seeing progress despite efforts to fix the problems? A recent study of the Urban Institute highlights some of the reasons why. NMP staff writer Katie Jensen talked with one of the study's authors for the latest episode of Gated Communities. People of color, renters of color, are, 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 are much less able to prepare for home ownership. The racial home ownership gap isn't closing, and researchers at the Urban Institute say it's because of a number of factors that create a cycle that's hard to break. The first being that whenever we face an economic downturn, people of color tend to feel the brunt of the job losses. This was true when the pandemic brought the service sector to a standstill. When we have some kind of recession and a company needs to, to right size, it has historically been Black people where the right sizing has happened uh, has happened first. It can also be harder for people of color to catch up once they get knocked off the path to home ownership. If they don't already own a home, high rents make it hard to save up. For families that are able to afford a home, they tend to have to pay more thanks to higher rates and fees. You put those two together um, and you're going to and people of color, black people in particular, um, on average, are going to have uh, are going to face uh, uh, higher burdens. Then there's the lack of affordable housing. The shortage is made even worse by climate change. Recovery efforts after major storms like hurricanes tend to replace affordable housing with more expensive single family homes. 
those that left and are unable to come back are therefore unable to benefit um, from the recovery from 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 the from the area's recovery. So how do we help reverse this trend? For starters, the Urban Institute suggests addressing some of the issues that continue to limit supply. Things like uh, labor availability, um, lending challenges um, for a long for for a long time and probably to a degree still um, lumber challenges. We could also offer forbearance permanently. Critics will raise concerns that doing so will be costly to the mortgage industry, but Urban Institute Principal Research Associate Michael Neal says this fits with the community-focused image presented by banker George Bailey in It's a Wonderful Life. But it's rooted in the way, in, 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 a, in, a, in a in a mission-oriented kind of approach of you know ensuring that people are able to maintain home ownership through the ups and downs of their everyday life. You can hear more from Neil on Gated Communities, the Mortgage News Network's podcast on how to help underserved borrowers, available wherever you get your podcasts. For the Mortgage News Network, I'm Katie Jensen. Thanks, Katie. We're now accepting nominations for the most inspirational women across all levels and sectors of mortgage lending. Honorees will be showcased in the March issue of NMP Magazine. If you know any woman who advocates to make women's voices in the mortgage industry louder, stronger, and more impactful, please submit your nominations to nmplink.com forward slash women of inspiration. We'll be right back with what else is interesting today. Welcome back. Here's what else is interesting today. Following eight months of consecutive decline, the Fannie Mae Home Purchase Sentiment Index increased 0.6 points in November to 57.3. However, it remained just above the all-time low set last month. The index found that elevated mortgage rates continue to constrain affordability, and 62% of respondents expect mortgage rates to rise even further over next year, compared to only 10% who expect rates to decline. Year over year, the full index is down 17.4 points. Fannie Mae economists say they expect the mortgage demand to continue to be curtailed by affordability, while homeowners with significantly lower than current mortgage rates may be discouraged from listing their property and potentially taking on a much higher mortgage rate. For more on these and all of today's top stories, go to MortgageNewsNetwork.com.